Welcome back. In case you just joined us, this is Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. And to the second topic of the day, barely six weeks after the defection of the governor of, uh, that's the governor of Ebony State, David Umayi, to the All Progressives Congress, APC, over the failure of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to zone 2023 presidency to the Southeast, the PDP states that the party would not be drawn to the politics of zoning its 2023 presidential ticket until the committee set up to review the performance in the 2019 general elections submits its report. The national chairman of the party, Uche Secundus, also adds that former President Goodluck Jonathan has the right to contest in 2023. And to this, the Northern Youth Leaders Forum, the NY. LF has warned former President Goodluck Jonathan not to contest for the presidency come 2023. Join us to make sense of all this warning plan and the rest is Mr. Diron Odeyemi, who is the National Deputy uh, Publicity Secretary of PDP. Good evening, Mr. Diron. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and joining us in this conversation too is uh, Reverend Dakpo Daramola, who is a public affairs analyst. Good evening, Revu. Like I always call you. My, my, ple <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure, my brother. Let me start from the party that is in the news on this. Mr. Duro, what exactly is it? Are we misinterpreting what the PDP is saying? And, or could you throw more light on what the party is saying? What the party is saying is very simple. Okay. That we don't want to rush into any action. We set up a committee to look at where, how, and who will be our candidate in 2023. Because we don't want to get it wrong. We believe this is our time. I want to give Nigeria the best. We want to do it in such a way that by the time we put up our candidates, he will have won 60% of the vote by his personality and by the way he is able to emerge through our party. So we don't want to make that mistake, and we believe uh, we don't have to rush it. We still have enough time. The committee is working, and uh, we believe at the end of the day, we are going to come out with the best. Okay, and that's the statement of the party. But let me just push you further before I go back to Mr. Uh, Daramola. Is it, is it okay to assume that power should shift to the south, and then we can be talking about microzoning the south? having, you know, the president from the north, even though he's not from your party? You are asking me a question on which we set up a committee. Okay. I will not be in the best position to answer that. That is part of the job of the committee, okay. to tell us where the president should come from, to tell us the caliber of the president we are going to present to Nigerians, to tell us the qualification, and just like I said, we want the best for this country. Okay. I will tell you more why I'm asking that question. Probably one of the reasons okay. is uh, the reason David Umayi gave that the body language of the party seems not to be going in that direction. But you've discussed this before. I'll come back to you on that. Mr. Dakpo Daramola, I see a situation here where politicians are already, you know, leaving us to speculate and guessing. Is that something you can deduce? Well, for me, uh, let me respond this way. PDP as a party is just very grounded. I can argue with back and forth, but I can I have my facts. PDP as a party in itself was founded on zoning. And I'm hoping that uh, I, I can be contradicted. When President Olusha uh, Gobatado was going to be handed, you know, the grace of leading the party as the president, it was an, it was, it was a, an unwritten, I, I everyone to believe that, you know, Based on the utterances of people like Odoma Dweke and several of the, of, of the party leaders at that time, there was a basic agreement on ground that the moment, you know, the South was done with power after Obasanjo, the power will move to the North for the next eight years. In fact, that was one of the things that worked against, if you go back and ask people like, um, uh, his name will come to me, uh, the former governor, uh, those of those people who stood against the, the, uh, the second term 
of President Jonathan. The argument was Aliyu that Babangida. they had not concluded their yeah, own time in Babangida. office because they are do or die. And so they allowed Jonathan to complete. Don't forget, it took a long time for us to even conclude on Jonathan becoming taken over as president. For a long time, he was acting president. That was why they went to bring the Jankara doctrine of necessity, which should never surface again in the history or you know our political history. In fact, those people who did that, I mean, they, they ought to go to jail for creating what they call doctrine of necessity. When the constitution is very clear that if a president does, he does not have the capacity to continue in office, either by ill health or other serious criminal you know, conduct, he should vacate and the deputy should, I mean, the vice should come in. And they want to create the, and, and, and Dwaka, and the lads want to create doctrine of necessity. That's a different matter anyway. Okay. But what I'm saying is that one of the reasons why PTP did not back Jonathan for a second time was because the Northerners felt that they were shortchanged, that they allowed Jonathan to do one term and then allowed the North to come back to complete the term which they did not finish. Okay. So zoning is part of us, whether it's even in our, federal, in our constitution, we have what we call federal character. In fact, it says that we must even pick ministers from the 36 states of the federation. Okay. That in itself is only. Mr. Daramola. So zoning Mr. Daramola. in the terms of whether in context or in content is part of us. That is okay. why most times even we, re we recognize religious zoning. When you have the, go the, the governor of the Christian and the deputy governor of the Muslim. Okay? So we recognize all of this. So okay. we cannot deny. So if the uh, PDP is very corrupting, it's a waste of time. Okay. Mr. Daramola, okay, I just wanted to quickly um, see whether I got it right that uh, the governor you were referring to was the former governor of Niger State, Ali Ubabangida, and uh, we also have the governor of uh, Jigawa Den, who stood against Jonathan being coming back. But we will come back to that. Uh, Mr. Adiran, I noticed you were smiling, and uh, probably you have a different narrative. I have not ruled out the issue of zoning in PDP. I have not said that. At least in PDP, the chairman cannot come from a zone and we pick the presidential candidate from that zone too. But even the chairmanship, the presidency and everything, what I'm saying is we have not arrived at that conclusion. There is a committee specially constituted for that assignment. And as soon as that assignment is completed, then we come out and tell Nigerians where we are and where we are going. And this is where the chairmanship will come from and where the president will come from. So it's not, there is no argument about zoning. Of course, we recognize zoning, but the zoning or the, the final proclaimment on the zoning will not be done now until the committee assigned to do the job finishes their job. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay, uh, Mr. Jackpot Daramola, I think we should allow Mr. Diron to maintain his position. He's a party man, and if, if the national chairman had said something, you don't expect him to differ with him. But let's continue our own conversation from the angle of how Secondos came out. He was saying that uh, what stops Jonathan from contesting? He's a Nigerian, and that also suggests that even if the, the, the party zone into the south, south-south might also come up. Do you think there's any chance at all for south-south to have a bite again? Well, it, it depends My... on the strength of, you know, which again comes to the argument of, you know, we can, whether he likes it or not, you know, again, just uh, blabbing about Umayyad's defection and all of that. You know, everybody defects from one party to the other. So when, when I even, he's so irresponsible of governors and all these politi political people. When they come out and begin to castigate one person de defecting or, or you know, moving from one party to the other, when it is a, a, a norm in Nigerian politics. So when you hear somebody, start, you know, vilifying or speaking against somebody who moves, you wonder, you know, when they move to your party, you celebrate the person. You know, when uh, Opasaki moved to PDP, it was Ure. But when the other person moves to the other side, you begin to say also. But that's, that's one other thing. The point is that it depends on the negotiating power of the South Easterners. I believe that the South East and the South South, they are the bedrock of PDP in, uh, you know, in this country. And they have shown that in, you know, in terms of delivering the goods over, over the years, since 1999. So it now becomes, you know, the issue now is, it becomes, you know, because PK today has called himself the de facto leader of the PDP, you know, because he has spectral dollars and everybody runs after him. Now, the question is, if you have somebody, a governor in the South East, who is strong, okay, who can match him, you know, pound for pound, or you have a, a politician who has what it takes. 
to mobilize, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, and to attract, you know, the kind of uh, interest and people, you know, can influence the process in PDP. Why not? They can give it a shot. I believe that South South has done it before, through Jonathan, and he, whether he didn't do two times, whether he did about six years, so it is still part of it. It's almost eight years. However, if there's somebody from the South East, because I, I have a lot of friends who, 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 who are not even happy with me, and I'm throwing my support that a South Easterner should become the president. I believe in the spirit of what we have been practicing over time. A South Southerner has been there for eight years. A North, 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 Northern person has been there. And then a South Southerner has been there. Let me let the South Easterners, you know, also you know, have a bite. Okay, okay. And then we can move to the middle there. Okay. So for me, it's a function of if you have somebody who has the capacity. You know, in the southeast, why not? Let them give it a shot. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, Mr. Odemi, now I, I, I totally respect your position, but can we look at it again? The exit of Umahi. This is very, very rare to see a sitting governor in the southeast, where PDP is very strong, move to APC. Don't you think this should be a serious factor? rather than saying the man was blackmailing the party. And the gist is that mob governors might even join him from that zone. If you're anticipating that more governors will join from the zone, I'm not the one anticipating now. Right. Because uh, he said it even before he joined the APC, that he was coming with many governors, senators, rep, and everybody. Okay. But at the end of the day, he went alone. There is nothing bad in a politician thinking about himself alone. And I want to respect him for that. Pol Nigerian politics is about me, myself, and I. You are talking about the same person. Perhaps Umar is anticipating that APC will present him as, a, as the candidate. I don't understand. So whatever might be the reason for Umar to have gone to APC, we wish him good luck. This is Nigerian politics. I, as a person, will not support the idea of anybody you know, cross-carpeting today, tomorrow, or any day. It's not developing our democracy, but that's another topic for another day. But what I'm saying, in essence, is whatever reason we might, might be given for joining the APC, we wish him good luck, and we'll see the result. Because right now, APC has not declared that they are zoning their presidency to the Southeast. So we don't know on which information he rely on for him to have become, even before APC made their final, made their final decision. So that's why I am saying that we wish him all the best. Whatever might be his reason, he has gone. PDP has remained. And we'll see if any governor is going to join him. Okay, maybe let me quickly ask this last question as we round off. So, uh, Mr. Dakwadaramola, you also brought in another perspective to this, that it should be the turn of the Southeast. Uh, do you see some kind of political arithmetics that might be upturned in 2023, because as we speak, the Southwest forces in APC are already saying that there was a gentleman agreement that Mr. Buhari, after your eight years, he should come to the Southwest. Do you think the South is mis miscalculating by joining APC? No, you see, the problem is that, you know, uh, like I said before, Bola Chinobu is the major force. Well, however, you want to position it, is being the person, uh, the name is being bandied everywhere that Bola Chinubu wants to contest. Now, I don't know whether there was a gentleman agreement between Bola Chinubu and Bola Chinubu and, you know, uh, President Muhammad Dubai that was going to, you know, relinquish, I, mean, I, I want to relinquish, but was going to back him up, you know, um, to contest. I don't see the signs. And I think, based on what we are seeing, you know, in fact, in fact the fact that Bola Chinubu, whether he has shown interest, formally or not, the fact that the news is right in itself has, has to, an, to an extent, destroyed APC to, to a very, very great, a grave ex extent. It has affected APC, you know, greatly. But that's the second, secondary matter. In this instance, I believe strongly that Southwest have done eight years. The North have done, you know, their bit. And that's about 10 years now. Buari eight years, and then Yadu about two years. It is now time to move to the southeast. Okay? And if they are the strongest block, because the south south also have done six years. So it is now time to move to the southeast. Whatever, whatever if it is one time, it is, it is now time to give them a taste, okay, of the pie. So they are the ones who have put their house in order. 
Okay. And they put the house in order and they're able to produce it. Whether you like it or not, moving this thing around is not only a Nigerian, okay. a Nigerian you know, uh, uh, system or kind of... It, it is the global. All over the world. Thank they're you so much. This thing. I, I know there's never enough time when we have... Uh, uh, um, Orators like both of you, uh, Mr. Dirodeemi, I wish we could take more time, but I understand my time is up. Trust me, we will, you always phone call away. We will bring you up as development on force. Thank you once again, Mr. Dirodeemi. He is the, nat the Deputy much. National Publicity Secretary of the PDP. And uh, Reverend Dagpo Daramola is a political analyst, or you call him a public affairs analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, we will take a short breather. And when we return, I will be giving you my take on the issue of the abduction. Please don't go anywhere. My take on the abduction of the 333 boys. No doubt it is a sad commentary that we are back on the abduction of students. This time, the boys. What this says is that we hardly do appraisal of our past errors to avoid future blunders. How do we explain an operation that lasted for more than one hour? Did the military roadblock have intelligence on the imminent attack or they were outsmarted by the government? Or should we call them the obvious name, terrorist? Was the attack carried out by bandits since that is the prevalence crime in the Northwest? While the military has assured that the location has been found, it is incumbent that the release should be secured by all means without any casualty. I agree that it is too early to start the blame game, but our hope is that there will be gains in this battle. And that's a uh, package on Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, same station. I am Coyote Ladendi, saying bye for now.